Hey everyone, my name is Gary, and today I want to record a walkthrough video of how you can use Recraft. Recraft is a tool for professional designers where you can generate and edit images of all styles, from extremely photorealistic ones to more moody editorial images, as well as illustrations that range from 3D to very artistic, graphic, or even vector ones. Before we cover how to generate any of them, let's first have a look at the interface. Starting from the top, we have our toolbar. From its left corner, you can navigate to pages outside of your current project, switch between Hand and Move tools, access the Insert menu and templates. In the middle, we see the project's name. You can click on it to rename, duplicate or delete it. And on the right, you see Credits and the Share button to invite others to have a look at your project. Moving on to the next block, the Create New panel. Use it anytime you want to create an image or a style in Recraft. We will get back to it in a second. Lastly, at the bottom right, you see the small panel with undo and redo actions, canvas zoom percentage, and links to layers, gallery, and help. Click on Help for tutorials and shortcuts, and gallery to access your image generation history. Now that we are familiar with the basics, let's generate our first image. Click on the first option in the Create panel to start. This would create an empty layer on our canvas and show the prompt panel with all of the settings for your image on the left. From here you can specify the dimensions of your image, its style, palette or references. The prompt for what you want and don't want to see in the generated image, as well as its aspect ratio, artistic level, which influences the creativity and composition, and lastly the number of variants per each generation. So, let's write a simple prompt and hit Recraft. Once it's generated, you'll see the image on the canvas and the miniatures for its variants at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see a new image with the same prompt and settings, simply click the Recraft button again. Additionally, you can fine-tune or variate the images you see. Fine-tuning allows you to specify how similar you want the new image to be and adjust the prompt if needed. While the Variate option doesn't use the prompt, but uses the visual content of the original image to generate alternatives instead. By default, all images are generated with Recraft V3 model. It's really versatile and does a great job at generating a wide range of images, but you can benefit immensely by applying a more specific style on top of it. Let me show you how. Click on the style selector in the prompt panel to open our style library. You'll see some filters and the main sort of generic options at the top and a list of specialized fine-tuned styles split by categories below. So now you can pick a style that best matches the vision and the art direction that you have in mind. For instance, you can select motion blur style and now you'll get this look and feel consistently with no complex prompt engineering. Or maybe you want to get this risograph treatment, simply click on a style you find interesting, have a look at some of the examples and click apply button to use it. The list of our curated styles is pretty big and includes styles for both raster images and vector illustrations, icons, logo types and graphic design. But if you feel like you still want to explore more options than head over to feed, it's quite literally an infinite style library. You can search by colors, vibe, and various techniques. Whenever you find a style that you like, hit the apply button or click save to use it later. You can access all of the save styles from navigation at the top. Now another thing that's super cool about our styles is that you can combine them with custom palettes. So here I have three images generated with the natural light style. They look cool just as they are, but you can click on this icon and create a palette that will push this style further. These visuals were generated with the exact same prompts and images in both sets have a very consistent look. But if you are working on branding projects and you want to stand out more, then combining palettes with styles can serve as a great trick up your sleeve. And it works across all sorts of styles. Look at these two sets of illustrations. The details and textures stay true to the original, but you get a very granular control over the color palette. Last thing I wanted to add to this topic is that you can create your own custom styles. Click on the style option here in the create new panel. In this overlay, you'll see three main blocks, the area at the top for your reference materials, then a list of your saved styles, and lastly, the images that you have in the current project on canvas. You can base your new style on images, either uploaded from your computer or the canvas, or you can remix styles that you've saved. Even one image can be enough, but you can upload up to five. And generally speaking, this makes the style more refined, because with more image references in the same style, the model will see how different objects are supposed to look like and will be better trained. Once the images are added, you'll see few additional controls. The style level prompt, 
two settings inside that prompt area and the testing panel on the right. Here is what each one is used for. With the style prompt you can specify exactly what look and feel are you going for. Think about colors, textures, geometry, composition. You just need to add it once and it will become embedded in the style, enabling you to use shorter prompts later for all new generations. The next control allows you to choose if the model should mimic the composition of the reference images or if it should only mimic the basic features like colors and textures. Basically, if you want to create a style that has something like a fisheye, low angle camera or distorted perspective, then choose the style and composition option. This way you'll get a much better result. But if your reference images have a more common look, then keeping the composition setting turned on might result in some unexpected layouts and I suggest to switch to style essentials instead. The other drop-down is basically a style category. In most cases, the suggested category works well. I'd just say to keep an eye on it in case you want to create a style for vector generation, but vector is not selected. Then pick vector icon if you're aiming for minimalistic icons and vector art if you're trying to get clean vector shapes. Last but not least, if you upload more than one image, you'll also see handles between the images. They are actually draggable and it's basically how you can control the weight of each image in your style. It's a really useful feature if you want to force a certain color palette from one of the images. Or maybe your references are very diverse and you want to make sure that the style of some of those images dominates. Once you have the style level prompt, image weights, composition and category settings all set up. Use the panel on the right to test your style. Simply write a prompt and click generate test image. If needed, you can then tweak some of your settings to update the style. This is a great way to validate and iterate on the style before saving it. Okay, cool. So far we've only generated raster images, but as I said earlier, you can also create vector illustrations in Recraft. A good use case for that might be a logotype. All the logotypes you see here were generated with very simple prompts and used the purposely built styles from the logotype category in our library. Because all of them are vector, you can tweak colors and export them in SVG format. Now that we have our logo, let's use it in a mockup. For mockups, you need two layers. The top layer for the artwork, which in our case is the logotype and the base image. So for this example, I generated this hoodie floating in the sky. And all I have to do now is to click on the make mockup action in the toolbar. Give it a few seconds to analyze the image so that the model better understands the objects and their geometry. And once that part is done, you simply drag your graphics inside that mockup container. And it's as simple as that. You have some additional controls in the left panel to tweak your mockup. Maybe you want to create a pattern. In that case, select a different tiling option. Or maybe you want to add a custom mask for your mockup. Click the Add Mask button and using a bunch of selection tools, draw the area where you want to mask the artwork layer. The cool thing about mockups in Recraft is that they can be way more complex and still be effortless to make. In this example, I've generated a vintage Porsche and bombarded it with stickers. And just look how well does the geometry distortion work and how realistic the lighting is. And my workflow here was just the same. I've generated the base image, converted it into a mockup, and then dragged a bunch of other image I created inside. I really like this image, so all that's left to do now is to export it. Select this frame and click the export button. From this menu, I can select the file format and adjust the image dimensions before clicking save. In addition to mockups, we also have frames in Recraft. Now, what can you use them for? The most basic scenario is outpainting. So you start with an image that you want to expand in any direction and you put it in a bigger frame. I hit F on my keyboard as a shortcut for frame and draw an area larger than my original image. And now I just click Recraft. The model will seamlessly merge the edges of the original image with the new generation. If you work with illustrations where you don't want the parts of the image to touch the edges, then you can also use outpainting to add white space around the elements. You can also use frames to merge object into a single image. So in this example, I arrange some images inside the frame and the new image combines them in a seamless way. If there is a specific area that you want to modify, click on Edit Area in the toolbar, outline that area with a tool of your choice and write a prompt. This is known as inpainting. You can use the same selection tools to get rid of elements you don't need. Simply draw a mask and click Erase button. Now I like this image and from here I can now upscale it using Crisp Upscale or Creative Upscale. The difference between them is that Crisp Upscale increases resolution and sharpness without altering the structure or content of the image, 
while Creative Upscale also regenerates the image content, which can improve anatomy, textures, and enhance the fine details. And just like we positioned the images inside the frames the way we wanted, you could also arrange the text elements inside frames and use them for things like poster, invitations, social media posts. Simply click on the letter T for text, type your text, apply a style to your frame, and click Recraft. Now there is one more thing left that I wanted to show you, and it's what we call AI editing. What it basically allows you to do is to use a reference image as your starting point. First create a new layer, click on the attachment icon, and select one of the external models that support this feature. Right now you can choose from three options of GPT model and two options of Flux context. I personally find the Flux as the best option when I need to preserve the look of my original character and I switch to GPT high when I want to transfer the style of one image to the other or do some contextual editing, because the GPT model also supports up to four attachments. After selecting the model, you can upload your reference image and then write your instructions in the prompt. Once the image is generated, the model is going to take both your new prompt and what is already in this image into account. So this allows you to iterate. Like here, I'm asking it to first add a suitcase to the roof of the car and then to change the cars completely. And because it takes the content of the current image into account, I'm able to get the new image that follows the original composition which I liked. Any image that you have on the canvas can be used as the reference. Simply select that image, click on the attachment icon, choose the desired model and the image will get attached automatically. All right, that's all I wanted to show you for this video and I hope you found it helpful. Stay tuned for more.